take these letters to the post. This one must go first class. The rest can go second. The one comfort I have in this whole business is that your parents didn't live to see it. Close the door. For me, would you? This one's first class. Oh, God. Here they come. Timing. Four sets of road roads in ten miles. Four. It's a bit of a damn it's nuisance. It's lovely to see you, but even on such a mournful occasion. How are the boys? Oh, they're appalling. The Constrello is a treasure beyond the price of rubies. Almost exactly the price of rubies, in point of fact. Uh -huh. <coughs> Quite. Well, of course it's expensive. Yeah. Abortions are expensive. But the point is, this clinic is absolutely reliable. Jack in the whip's office recommended it. Total discretion. It'll all be over by four o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Shouldn't we be considering other options? I mean, well, what does he be? Well, surely this situation isn't entirely unheard of. Oh, don't be ridiculous, do you? He be herself refuses to say who the father is. Claims she doesn't know. <laughs> Some yobber, no doubt. Black as like as not. I knew that au pair business was a nonsense from the start. Ah, oh, but honestly, I mean, surely most families have skeletons. I mean, couldn't she keep a little bastard if she wants to? Oh, for God's sake, Delian. I am nursing a marginal constituency, you know. You never had any sense of the fitness of things. And what about the children? I don't want some multicoloured cousin for my boys. And Hebe's future, I mean, who's going to marry the mother of some black man's love child? We don't know for certain he's black, Anne. Well, Italian junkie then, whatever. We really must think of what is best for Hebe. Well, I'm glad we're all agreed. There's no alternative. I'm flying to New York in the morning. So if Delian could drive Hebe to the clinic, then that would leave everything settled and sorted. in fold to that damn donkey. Robert's a good chap in an emergency, though. Settle that hash in no time. In spite of everything, I can't help feeling sorry for that poor girl. Poor oh, girl, nonsense woman. We've cherished a crocodile. We've cherished a what? A crocodile. A crocodile. I smiled. Oh, for God's sake, woman. Fasson de parler. that girl? Just a neighbour. Her name's Hebe. Hebe? 
A virgin crowned with flowers, daughter of Jupiter and Juno. Speciality was harnessing peacocks. Does this Hebe harness peacocks? Oh, don't think so. And she's hardly a virgin. She's got a 12-year-old son like me. We're both single parents. Oh, yes. Well, that's mine. Hebe's boy goes to boarding school. Rather a posh school, I understand. Ah. Anything else you want to know? I'm just a mine of information. Let me see. Do you think your friend Hebe would have some antiques I might buy? Oh, not a chance. She hasn't got a bean. She dresses from Oxfam. Oh, well. If your aunt changes her mind about the paperweights, here's my card. Give me a ring. What? You'd come all the way from London? Yes, I would. For the paperweights. I must go. If she's a single parent who dresses from Oxfam, how does she pay school fees? Not sure, really. She does some cooking for rich old ladies. And I think she has a small private income as well, or something. Ah. Goodbye. Bye. Lovely jacket. Yes, about us all, I have to admit it. Well, this is it, I suppose. I've, uh, what's the right word? Graduated. Summa cum laude. Really? You're the best student I ever had. Get off. I was hopeless to start with. No, you weren't. You just didn't have enough confidence in yourself. It's all right now, though. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, I'm going to really miss coming here. I'm going to miss you too, Terry. Here. Terry, this is far too much. No, I want you to have it. Honestly, I'm making so much money these days, I don't know what to do with it all. You know, it can't be easy for you, bringing up a big lad on your own. Well, that's very sweet of you, Terry. Thank you. Well, I must be going. But thank you very much. Bye, Terry. Knock him dead. You've changed my life, you know. Don't lose touch. How did you know about that old girl and her paperweights? Where did she get them? They're immensely valuable. Wouldn't sell them, though, would you? The niece talked a lot. Rather eager, I thought. Name's Hannah. Hannah Summerton. She didn't have anything I wanted. Oh, pity. There was another girl across the road. Long hair, long legs. Reminded me of someone. Just the walk. I didn't get a proper look at her face. But you think she might have something you want? Why did you never marry? Couldn't make up my mind. Wasn't prepared to give anything up. Well, what about you, eh? If you're not careful, you'll end up a bachelor. Not that I can't recommend that state. The trouble with you, Bernard, is you're nothing but a wicked old reprobate. Oh, by the way, if you manage to buy those paperweights, why don't you give them to that girl with the long legs? They're Baccarat and Clichy, Bernard. Perfect. You think she's worthy of them? Oh, I think so, wouldn't you? Aren't they all? Auntie. All right. Still alive. I'll get you some ice. What do you think of the knocker? The antiques, man. Rather interesting. Comes from London. Did you sell him anything? No. He offered me 500 for this. 500? I had no idea they were worth that much. They're worth a lot more than that. And he knew it. Where'd you get them all? People gave them to me. That was in my Paris days. Why? Because they liked me, silly. He was rather tasty, the knocker. Mr. Jim Huxtable of Fitzroy Antiques. He stopped talking to you when you saw Hebe, though, didn't he? Makes you sick, doesn't it? <laughs> and she's not interested at all. I suppose Silas's father must have been her one great love. You read too much Mills and Boone, you do. Well, none of us should be alone. It isn't natural. Thank you. 
absolutely fabulous. Mungo? Oh. Mungo! Yes, darling? You look as if you've just seen a ghost, darling. What? Oh, oh Lord, no, no, no. I, 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 I saw someone who, who reminded me of... of uh, oh, never mind. No. No. <laughs> I say, should we, uh, should we go and have a drink in there? Would that be a thing, do you think? But uh, actually, they do a, a jolly good spot of lunch in there as well. Uh, <laughs> What's the matter? We're not tiring you, I hope, Mungo. Tiring me? Good Lord, no, no. It's just I, I do usually like a spot of lunch around lunchtime. That's all, Eli. <laughs> should I lead the way? Dry sherry, please, Mungo. Dry sherry, uh, Eli? Well, I guess I should have a glass of cider, Mungo, as we're in Devonshire. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, indeed, why not? If you can stomach the stuff. Yes, dear? A vodka on the rocks. That's plenty of vodka, not, not too, too many, many rocks. rocks. <laughs> <laughs> right. One of vodka on the rocks. Honey, sure thing, baby. One little old vodka on the rocks and we'll all mosey down the little girl's room and throw up. Beg your pardon, sir? Large scotch, no ice. Anything else, sir? This is nice, Alison. And we're really looking forward to having you in our home. I'm looking forward to that too, Eli. Mm. Just a shame Mungo can't spare the time to come over. Oh, I don't know. I think we'll manage pretty well without him. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> dry sherry. Uh, cider. And uh, vodka on the rocks. Thank you, darling. <clears throat> Ah, uh, we were just comparing the uh, merits of uh, Exeter Cathedral with uh, Lincoln and Durham, Mungo. All the same to me, I'm afraid. I've seen one cathedral, seen more, I tend to feel. Uh, you English, you just don't appreciate what you have, do you? No, no, it would seem not. I'll uh, just go and reserve a table. There. It's so hard to bear. <laughs> Everybody knows you left me. It's the talk of the town. God, what, what the hell are you doing here? Having a pee. Look, no, Mungo, no, no, no. I'm a stash. I'm in a hurry. I mean, I mean, what are you doing in Exeter, for God's sake? Meeting someone. What are you doing here? Oh, drag is. I'm all for yank friends of Alison's around us. Oh, Hebe. Hebe, I must have you. Mm. Mm. Mungo. Mm. That's not possible. Look, I must go. I'm in a hurry. No, 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 no. Let go, Mungo. Look, Alice is getting us tits. I'll be all on my own for three whole weeks. We could spend it all in bed together, darling. Oh, God, I feel so rad. Mungo, <laughs> it's not your turn. Well, who the hell's turn is it? Silas's. Well, who the hell's Silas? I've got to go. Hebe, I, I love you! Go on, darling. grown so much. What did you expect? How school? Is everything okay? Yes, fine. Why don't I go to an ordinary school? Well, you know, a comprehensive. Like Giles. Are you sure everything's all right? Yes. But I'd be just as all right in a comprehensive, though. No, you wouldn't. And it'd be cheaper. You wouldn't have to do so many cooking jobs. I like cooking. Anyway, it's the only work I'm any good at. Do you mind me doing it? No. Do you ever get jobs in the holidays? 
I wouldn't take one. Holidays are when I see you. Well, you could if you liked. I wouldn't mind. What do you mean? Well, one of the boys has asked if I'd like to come sailing with him and his people in the Sillies. When? Well, next week, actually. And do you want to go? Would you mind awfully? Darling, of course not. I'll take a job while you're away. I'll go to Mrs. Fox in Wiltshire. Who's Mrs. Fox? One of my rich old ladies. Actually, she's the very nicest of my rich old ladies. Good. And will you be home when I get back from the Sillies? Of course I will. The bloody flowers. Sorry, Dad. So, not only are you swanning off to Santa Barbara with Eli and Patsy, you now propose to deprive me of the comfort and solace of my sons. You know very well you're dying to get rid of them. Well, you know best, dear, as always. Right, right, fine, fine. So where are we packing them off? The Falkland Islands, was it? Sillies, Mungo, with the Reeveses. You know, they're very nice people. Their boys are dying for eating too. That doesn't mean anything these days. Half the Mafia have their sons down for eating. Ian! Oh, darling, do be careful. Sorry, Mum. Well, never mind, never mind. You all go off and enjoy yourselves. Leave me to my summer of loneliness. I've had enough of this charade, Mungo. You know you're dying to get rid of us. Go and see your mother if you're lonely. Oh, thank you very much, darling. Well, you could go and see that tart of yours. What? What tart? The one you've been seen about with in London. How many tarts have you got? Only one. Only one. It's not my Bloody turn. Damn, I'm blasted all to hell. Amazing. The running gear's Amtrak. Do you know how much it costs for the whole lot? 110 quid. For a bit of wood with wheels on? Just because you haven't got one. Mm. All your mum's money goes in that posh school, my mum says. I know. Is it a brilliant school in your school? No. It's a dump. I hate it. Ours is okay. At least they let us go home at night. Did your mum buy this, then? No, it was my father, actually. He gets these spasms of guilt. Does your father get spasms of guilt? I must have told you a million times. I don't have a father. Oh, yeah, right. <sighs> well, you must have a father. I mean, how would you get born and everything? I don't think that's any of your business, do you? Mrs Fox? It's Hebe. Hebe? How nice to hear your voice. How are you? Well, uh, this is very short notice, but I've had a cancellation for next week. And I was wondering whether you'd like me to come to you for a week. Or two, if you like. Don't think of asking anyone else, Hebe. Oh, what a treat. And do come for the whole two weeks. Well, I'll see you on Monday, then, at six. Bye. Hello? Lucy? Yes? Is that you? Yes. I've just been speaking to the treasure. She's coming to me on Monday. Aren't I lucky? But I thought she never took jobs in the summer holidays. Yes. You are lucky, Louisa. I'm very put out. Why didn't she ask me? Because she prefers my company, I imagine. And she did come to you in May. How's your boy, Mungo? I haven't seen him for weeks. I think he might be sickening for something. He groans a lot on the telephone. Louisa, why don't I come and stay with you next week? I could help you pay for Hebe. No, I think I'd rather keep her all to myself, thank you. You can come and stay when she's gone. Oh, Lucy. Two whole blissful, greedy weeks. There's really no need to gloat quite so blatantly, Louisa. Oh, I 
think that it is. What are you doing? Nothing. 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 Damn it. Oh, Hebe. Oh, there you are. I'll pop round. Better for seeing you. <laughs> well, I thought I'd pop in today as we're both off on our travels tomorrow. I brought you the rent. You're paying a year in advance or what? This is far too much. I got a bonus. Please take it. Bonus, eh? Who from? The black boy, was it? Mm -hmm. Terry. A goodbye present. Don't tell me that he's had enough of you. We're just good friends. He'll feed the cat while I'm away. We'll still read poetry together, I expect. Poetry, eh? He must be doing well, though, your Terry. What was it he does? I don't really like to ask. He just says he's self-employed. Like you, eh? Like us, Amy. Oh, I never got it organised like you. Only those you want. Only when you want to. Don't call me, I'll call you. All those bonuses they give you wasn't like that when I was a girl. I gave you these, though. I had my moments. La fille anglaise. I was highly spoken of in Paris, you know. I bet you were. So where are you and Silas off to now? Well, I'm doing a cooking job. And Silas is off to the Sillies with a school friend and his family called the Reeveses. Oh, jolly good. Right sort of people, are they? I bet they're not like the sort of people I introduced you to. Amy. Bad lots. Like Bernard Quigley. What's the matter with Bernard? Only put you on the game, didn't he? Amy! It is a slight exaggeration. <laughs> so who is this we're going to see? Bernard Quigley. He's my friend. I found him when I was exploring across country. It's your relation. I told you, I haven't got any relations. You must have some, even if you were adopted. Look, it's feathers. Hello, feathers. Hello. Hello. This is Charles Crow. He's brought you some ham sandwiches. Hey, that's my lunch. They're all for you, feathers. Isn't he a generous chap? Well, what have we got here, eh? Two drowned rats? Well, this is indeed a pleasant surprise. Come in, boys. Come round the fire. Dry off. We'll all have a glass of sherry together, hey? Hmm? Well, what do you think of my treasures, Giles Crowell? They're very nice. Are they worth a bomb? One doesn't ask the value of things. One admires them for their beauty, rarity, workmanship. Sorry. Where did you get them all? My work, Giles Crowell. These treasures are my work. Are you a burglar, then? <laughs> Certainly not. I'm a dealer. A burglar, honestly. But come on, drink up. I'm surprised at you boys, eh? I was on half a bottle of day at your age. Giles Crowell, eh? Was your father Edward Crowell? Yes. Do you know him? Yes, I used to. You don't look like him, fortunately. I thought it was supposed to be good looking. Oh, yes, he's very good looking. But what's the use of that in the dark? Hmm? Ask your mother. In the dark? In bed, dear boy. Haven't you heard about bed yet? What? Yep, but never mind, never mind. Perhaps we should be getting back soon. Look at this one. Isn't it beautiful? Put it on. What? Me? Yeah, yeah. Come on, Giles. You've been fastening it. Yeah. I got the 
very thing to finish the effect. You know, not many women can wear one of these with conviction, and even fewer boys, but uh, I think you may be one of them. Yeah, put it on. Yeah. Quite beautiful. My socks are still all squelchy. But it rains all the time in the sillies, too. Probably get trench foot. I wish you'd shut up about the sillies and your posh snog friends. You're really boring, you are. You're boring about your skateboard. Much more boring than I am. Probably runs in the family. The dull crawls. If my father's a ball, what's yours? You just don't know, do you? Just shut up about it, will you? You've got to have a father somewhere, even if you are a bastard. Hey, maybe your mother's a hermaphrodite. A what? You heard. See you when you get back, yeah? All right. Louisa? Bernard. Bernard? Why are you telephoning? Has something gone wrong? Are you ill? No, 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 no. Uh, Hebe's boy is here today. She's coming to cook for me from tomorrow. Yes, I know. Uh, can you afford it? No, not really. You better sell me something, then. I suppose I had. Uh, I'll send the money around by hand, eh? Would 500 be about right? You couldn't come yourself. It'd be so lovely to see you, Bernard. After all this time. Oh, no, it wouldn't. The man I shall send is called Huxtable. Jim Huxtable. You may trust him. Good night, Louisa. Bernard. Take care of yourself, you old bastard. Now, look here, Mr. Patel. It's perfectly yeah. simple. You... Maybe it's not Hold there on. now. It's only going to be where you put it. Henry, Henry, where are you? Where? Yesterday. All you have to do is give me Miss Hebe Rutter's number and let me talk to her direct. You're afraid you can't do that? Why not? A matter of honor and trust, I see. Would 25 pounds sterling alter that situation at all? Well, 125, then. I see. Would you be kind enough to pass on the following message as a matter of extreme urgency? Mr. Mungo Duff, would... I'll talk to you later. Yes! What? Alistair can't find his snorkel, Dad. What does he want his snorkel for? It's bedtime, for God's sake. We're packing, Dad. We're going to the Sillies tomorrow. So you are. We need our snorkels. Well, why don't you ask your mother? She's in Santa Barbara, Dad. Aye, yes, yes, of course. And she says we're old enough to pack for ourselves now. Well, if you're old enough to pack for yourselves, you're also old enough to find your own bloody snorkel, aren't you? Yes, Dad. Yes, well, bloody well, get on with it then. Oh, Hebe. Hello, Mungo. What's the matter? What is it? I... Uh, um... I... Do you want to sleep with me, Mungo? Is that what it is? Well, uh, yes. Yes. Very much indeed. Oh, yes. All right, then. We'll go to an hotel and see whether you suit me. And if you do, we'll come to an arrangement. An arrangement? I can't do it for nothing. I have to earn my living. And I'm afraid I'm rather expensive. But the first time will be a free trial to see whether I'm happy with you. Well, you're happy with me. Oh, you'll be happy, all right? Don't worry about that. Sorry, I, I was hoping, I mean, I was expecting another call. I, hmm? 
Well, why can't you tell me now whatever it is? No, I am not particularly drunk, in point of fact. All right, Mother. Mm? Yes, I will. As soon as I've got the boys off. All right, Mother. All right. who my father is. Does he? And what do you tell him? Uh, I just say I haven't got one. What do you mean you don't know? How can you possibly <laughs> not know who you lying little whore? Oh, was it more than one of them? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're trying to tell us? Dirty little slut, slut! Look at your dirty feet! Look at your dirty hair! Who was it? Who? Was it? Who? 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 I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> they put something in my drink. Then someone helped me. He was kind to me. He took me out. I don't remember. Don't you dare lie to us. We should never have trusted you. Never. Never. Yes. Uh, please do. Uh, look around, yes. I'm afraid those aren't for... They're just for... But if you... Uh, You look quite marvellous in that. 
belonged to my great aunt. Come along, come along. We'll get a parking ticket. Um, just a moment. Um, just sit, sir. Uh, happy come. Uh, I, is there anything I can... Um... I'm sorry. Uh, no lunch. Have I had the hat? No, no, it's fine. It's a lovely hat. Isn't it? And I'm not gay, you know. No, you just like hats. Yes. My father's a general. That must be awful. It is rather. I better be going. Thank you so much. But you should rest a few more of them. And you must take the hat when you... How much is it? Nothing. It was just for display. Please, I want you to have it. It would give me so much... Pleasure? Yes. Gotta take the weather as it comes here, Silas. You get used to it. Where's Michael? They're all out sailing. You'll have to put up with me till supper time. <laughs> do you know these islands well, Silas? I've never been here before. But you do live in the country, don't you? I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. I live in a street called Wilson Street, after a man called Harold, Harold Wilson. How frightful for you, Silas. <coughs> yeah, give me a hand with it, Silas. Lord, I could murder a stiff gin. What does your father do, Silas? Julian's a stockbroker for his sins. Delicious. Dead simple, really. Smoked salmon, cream, lemon juice, fennel. Uh -huh. Tablespoon of vodka. <laughs> so glad you liked Rory's hat. He needs encouragement. His father tried to push him into the army. Well, I thought he was nice. He's gentle. He's a sort of honorary nephew. I let him fish my stream. I knew his father. And his grandfather. His grandfather asked me to marry him. He was a tedious fellow. I once had a date with Rory's grandfather in the Ritz. And at the same time, I'm with another man across the road in the Barclay. I left them both waiting for me and met someone else all together and spent the night with him. And was he the one you married? No, no. He wasn't suitable at all. Though I did once spend a wonderful week with him in Paris at the Hotel d'Angleterre. So what became of him? He's still alive. We talk sometimes on the telephone. And does he ever visit you? Oh, no. No. What is it, Mother? I mean, what is this business that's so serious it can't be discussed on the turf? Oh. Not illness, I hope. Of course not. I'm as strong as a horse. Well, uh, money? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Mungo. Well, what then? Perhaps you'd better pour yourself a drink and sit down first. Oh, good God, Mother, stop fooling about and tell me what's up. What's up is that Alison has left you for good, she says. She asked me to break the news to you. Really? Is that all? Thought it must be something really dreadful. I think I shall have a drink. Apparently, 
Exactly. She's going to form a menage a trois with those American friends of yours. Eli and Patsy. Good God. They were staying with us. Do you mean she was carrying on with Eli right under my nose? With both of the Mungo. I told you, it's a threesome. Good God. Well, what are you going to do about it? Divorce her, of course. Oh, and go off with that pretty young girl who comes to cook for me. That's your plan, I suppose. What do you know about me and Hebe? Oh, Mungo. We all know about you and Hebe. <laughs> what on earth makes you imagine that a girl like that would take you on in any permanent way? Hmm? Well, go over to Louisa Fox's and ask her yourself. Louisa Fox? Is that where she is? Right then. I will! You've been wasting your time. She devalues your independence far too highly to tie herself to someone like you. What do you mean? Someone like me? Am I not unique? Only to your mother, Mungo. Only to me. Now, stop all this nonsense. How are we to get Alison back? I don't want her back, Mother! Oh, yes, you do. Down. We're not at sea now. Let's see, Silas. Boys, boys, for God's sake, not in there. Put your stuff outside. I've only just got this place sorted. Darling, darling. Yes, my darling. Take them off, my darling. Mrs. Thing's just on the floor. Oh, right you are, darling. God, I'm dying for a bloody scotch. Well, get it yourself, my darling. Where are your deck shoes, Silas? Sorry, I didn't know I needed any. On a sailing holiday? Brilliant. Right. All of you, upstairs, change your filthy shorts, and for God's sake, watch! Yeah, Alice, oh, what are you sorry, doing? Oh, Alice, move out of the way, you sonny oh, God! Come on! Glad to get out of these, actually. They squeeze my parts. These squeeze my parts? Large parts run in the family. Dad says his are much admired. Mm -hmm. Who by? His mistress. He has a mistress. Thinks we don't know. Haven't heard Mum's opinion on them. I think she takes them as they come. Takes them as they come, get it? Ha 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 ha! My father would like a mistress, but my mother won't let him have one. Ah, stew again. Excellent. Julian, darling. I thought we might sail around Bishop's Rock tomorrow. I like that, Silas. That'd be lovely. Silas tells me he lives in a very interesting street. It's called Wilson Street. Actually, I quite like it there. Is your family Labour then? What? You know, not Tory. Red under the bed and all that. I've got a pot under my bed just in case I get caught short in the night. No, I mean, Harry. Ha 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 ha! God, holidays. Sir, it's only me. You too? Where is she there? Hmm? Not in bed already, surely? I bought her some trout. Look, hmm? it's not for you, you nosy. Where is she? Let's go and have a look then. Harry. 
Come on down. Come on. Aunt Louisa. Oh, hello. I'm so sorry. I thought I'd... What? A headache or something. No, she just went to bed early. She was tired. Did you want this back? No. No, not at all. Then what are you doing here? I was fishing. Brought some trout. Oh, good. Do you know you've got an erection? Sorry. I think it must have been the hat. Could you put it back on again, please? Yes, of course. Do you think we should go to bed now? You'll be back. I know. You'll be back. Tony. Hello. I'm very short sighted, that's why I appear. <laughs> it really happened. It certainly did. Is that all right? Yes. Very much. You see, I've never been able to before. I mean, not properly with my. Um, I mean, not with my. Uh, well, you can, can't you? It is lovely, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yes. It was simply. Who are you, actually? Just a temporary cook. One of your aunt's indulgences. Has she never told you? No. Well, yes, she has, but she never mentioned how... What's your name? Hebe. Hebe. A pretty bush. I mean, Thanks shrub. You. I meant shrub. No, you didn't. Look, Rory, I might as well tell you. I'm not just a cook. I sleep with men for money. Oh. I have to earn my living. I don't have any professional qualifications. The only things I'm good at are cooking and sex, as you found out. Making love, please. But Rory, that wasn't making love. That was having it off. You've made me in love with you, I'm afraid. I mean, to you it may be what you said, but to me it's making love. Rory, this isn't 1930. Don't worry, I'll pay you for last night. I'm quite well off, you know. I wouldn't dream of it. That was a free sample because I fancied you. Oh. Would you like another one before breakfast? Yes. <laughs> oh, Hebe. Come to do some fishing. Morning, Louisa. Morning. Good morning. Sorry, yes, uh, but I've done some already. Oh, yes. How delicious. Trout for breakfast. You must have been up very early this morning. Uh, well, yes, 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 I was. I see you've met Hebe already. Yes. Don't you think I'm lucky to have her? Very, yes. What time did you come this morning? It must have been uh, very early. Just at the right time. For the trout, it would seem. 
Oh, it's just the dogs didn't bark. They don't always, do they? No. Hebe, would it be very selfish of me to ask you to do my shopping at Salisbury this morning? Not at all. I'd like that. Perhaps, uh... Perhaps I could, uh... Uh... Perhaps you could what, Rory? Drive. Uh, Hebe in. Uh, g give her a lift back when I come back to fish. I'm planning to fish this evening as well. Uh, yes, if that's all right. I see. Would that arrangement suit you, Hebe? Oh, yes. Fine. Good. In springtime, we don't put even time. I suppose there are other men. Yes, of course. Many. That's nothing to do with you. And what you and I do has nothing to do with them, all right? Right. So, would you like to join the syndicate? Someone's just dropped out as it happens. How does it work? Well, I tell you when I'm free. We decide on a place. And I meet you there for a weekend, or a week. I'm in love with you. Can't you sack the rest of the syndicate and marry me? That's very nice of you, Rory. But I'm afraid marriage just isn't on the menu. Or love. Sex, conversation, fun, and tenderness. That's all. For money. For money. All right, I want to join. This <laughs> <laughs> is I'm Jim Huxtable. I brought you some money from Bernard Quigley. How do you do? Yes, he said you'd be coming. Very kind of you. 500, perhaps you should count it. No, I don't think I need to do that. Shall we go in uh, and I'll give you a drink? Thank you. Or, or a snack before you go on your way. Have you far to go? Only to Bernard. To Bernard? Yes. You must tell me how he is. Uh, do you see much of him? Uh, it's ages since I saw him. Ages. Yes, I do see quite a bit of him. Seems pretty fit. He doesn't change. No. No? Come into the kitchen and tell me all about him. Not too fast. You relaxed. You hear what I say? Don't worry about it. No ragging about it. Will you come it's back? Not so fast. What would you do? But I wouldn't hear of it. I've been oh, round Bishop's Rock more times than you've had hot dinners. Now I've got lots to do here. Off you go, Silas. Take my place. And welcome to it. Take care of my deck shoes. So I'll put that sail up in the bows, please. Who's got the lunch? Mrs. Thing has packed some pasties. Super for sailing! Oh, that's rather a nice Guernsey, Silas. A bit on the large side, isn't it? Oh, that's my mother's, actually. He's got his mother's Guernsey on and my mother's shoes on. Silas is sailor. I wonder his necklace he's wearing. Mrs. Things! Oh, all right, all right. Simmer down. Now, Michael, you ready? Yes, sir. Right. Prepare to cast off, then. Now, let the front of the boat swing out! That's right. Why? But don't hang on to the edge of the key, you stupid boy, otherwise you'll fall in! Right, now concentrate. Why? That's better. Push 
Hang on to that rope till I tell you to. Will you do what I tell you? I am! We can't do it! Grab hold of that for goodness sakes. Listen to what I'm saying. You're so incompetent. What's the matter with you boys? We're doing it! I'm really not going to take you out to see if you can't behave properly. Bloody well do what I say! You seem very expert. I spent two years in Italy learning to make coffee. Mm. It's excellent, Mr. Huxley, even better than Cook's. What a shame she's not here. You would have enjoyed meeting her. Well, let's try and get through this as quickly as possible. This. This. And this. And this. Enough, do you think? More than enough. I'll uh, write you a receipt. No, no. Bernard trusts you. That's enough for me. You will tell him to telephone me, won't you? Yes, I will. Do you know Cormorant from a shag, Silas? The shag's a bit smaller. No white patches. Yeah, good chap. Not just a pretty face, then. Nothing like a jolly good shag! <laughs> oh, do put a sock in it, Alistair. Would you like to take the wheel for a while, Silas? Yes, please. This flat about the shop, and uh, we could put the grouse and things in my fridge and have lunch um, in the flat. And then afterwards, perhaps we could um, um... go to bed. Is that what you were thinking? Well, um, yes. Good plan. Close to the banner. Bloody good pasties. Sorry, good pasties. What do you think of the pasties, Silas? Not bad. A bit too much fat, actually. It's too Bloody hell. You've only fallen up on your mouth, best diction. Your head down. I'll get your glass of them. No, it's all right. I'm not going to faint. Oh, I just imagined I smelled something. What? It reminded me of. I don't remember. That's what's so silly. It's coffee or oh, wood smoke. Some smell from a long time ago. I had a visitor today. He made the coffee after lunch. Very strong. 
He had a special method even better than yours, Hippie. Well, that must be it, I suppose. Smells can be very evocative. Yes. Yeah. Don't be such an oaf, Michael. Wash them. There's a tap by the back door. Here's the jays. Good God, it's not as he would if they were yours. They're too. What? What was that? How dare you? Ow! He is your visitor. You insisted on inviting him. Right, thank you. As for you. Sorry, Michael. Forget it. No one means to be sick. Your mother? Does she create? No, she doesn't. You're lucky. <laughs> Ugh. Well, good night, Aunt Louisa. Thanks so much for dinner. The, the grouse were delicious. Thank Hebe for the grouse. You're not going to fish after all. Uh, no, I thought it might be a good night for, um... It seems not quite right after all. Oh, dear. Good night. I'll walk you to your car. Sorry, Rory. I broke one of my rules last night. I'm a cook in this house, not a tart. And you've had your free sample. So I... What, what, what? I, I can't come here at all. Oh, you can come and see me here. You just can't come and have me here. Oh. All right. Good night. Good night. Irregular. These bloody boys ought to be in bed not to see them supper. We were waiting for you to come back from the pub, my darling. No way, my darling. Well, that really is most extraordinary, sweet. Oh, never mind. Let's have some vino. Silas, who'd been known to take a glass. Oh, oh, it's really, really a shame and not It is very good, Stu. Huh? I didn't say it was bad, I said it was not Julian. Fond of stew, are you? Bit of a stew connoisseur. Well, have, have some more. Mrs. Thing is a stew artiste. No, oh, have some more. You need a refill after today. No, thank you, sir. <laughs> Well, the boy calls me sir now. <laughs> Let's all have some more stew. Jennifer, give the boy some more stew. But none of us get stew like this at home. Silas's mother is a cook, actually. Is she indeed? Good God. Whatever next. One of my uncles married his cook. Yeah, rather blotted the old copybook there, didn't he? Not even pregnant, was she? Still, when you come to think of it, it's not a bad idea. Your father had the right bloody idea. Yeah. Marry a cook, eat well, save the wages. You are drunk. Not really? Not especially? Not for the time of the night, season of the year. So, your mother's a cook, is she? Well, I never. How did this, uh, come about? I mean, did she get, uh... Julian! No, 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 it, it's pretty rare to find a cook at all these days. Endangered species. Species. Must be bloody clever of your father to find one. Must be a bloody clever man. Silas's mother is very beautiful. I've seen her picture. Not just a bloody good cook, but a pretty face, too. Your father must be a bloody sight cleverer than I thought he was, eh? No, 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 no. no. Allow me. So, 
I repeat, your father must be a bloody clever man. Oh, what does he do? This bloody clever father of yours. I don't have a father. My mother is a hermaphrodite, and you are disgusting. <laughs> Don't be afraid. I'm uh, Terry, friend of Hebe's. Oh, I thought you were a gunner. Oh, put you back in bed, okay? Come on. Oh. 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 Is it is it your heart? Is it? Tika, have you got tablets? Oh. Um, one or two. I know you. You're Hebe's black joke, aren't you? Oh, charming. Save her life and she does a Bernard Manning on you. Who's supposed to be in charge of you then? Oh, my niece, Hannah. She's number six. Right. Well, I better go and get her, hadn't I? Try not to die when I'm away, won't you? They've put a lot of effort into you. <laughs> black joke. Honestly, some people. Uh, uh. Hi. Uh, hi. I, I, I've just come from your auntie's. She's had a flood downstairs and she's, and she's had a little bit of a funny turn. It's no panic, but I, I think you should come. Yes, all right. But, I mean, who are you? Uh, uh, Terry. Terry. Uh, a friend of Hebe's. I was coming to feed her cat. Haven't you seen me before? I... I've seen you. As a matter of fact, I've had my eye on you. I'd, um, better go and put something on. Yeah, I suppose you had. Next. 
I think we've cracked it. Got the carpets up, got the water out, had the doctor around, your auntie's very happy. Let's go back to your place and you can make me a cup of tea. Is it all right if I get on the beach now, Mum? Hmm. I think that would be a very good idea. Mr. Tremaine, it's Jim Huxtable. But you can come out if you like. It must be Hebe, you mean. What would you want with her? I just thought she might have something I was looking for. She had a few bits of jewellery. She sold them to an old scoundrel called Quigley. Bernard Quigley? Well, it's not a scoundrel. <laughs> you should have known him in his Paris days. He had a way with him. Hotel d'Angleterre. <laughs> you like the look of Hebe, hmm? I only caught a glimpse of her. She reminded me of someone I knew once. Well, you're out of luck. Because she's away. Mr. Jim Huxtable. Hello. I was hoping to see Hebe Rutter. That's my mother. When will she be back? I don't know. You're shivering. I know. I was out all last night. Good God. Isn't there a neighbour you could go to? There's Hannah. But I'm not sure if she's in here. Come on, let's see. <laughs> Terry, you do have to understand. I just don't do this kind of thing. I know, I know. I could tell that from the start. Oh, Terry. You're so... <laughs> <laughs> nice. I've had private lessons. I graduated summa cum laude. <laughs> and now, Hannah, babe, it's all for you. Oh, Terry. You're so... Yeah. Feel down there in a minute. Terry, silk knickers. <laughs> <laughs> They're nice, aren't they? Mm. And what's inside? <laughs> oh, Hannah, I think they're so beautiful. I've been watching you for ages. Oh, God, you are. You've got the most beautiful. Oh, hell. <clears throat> I'll come back if it's important. Go away if it's not. But this is very important, right? Look, do you know Bernard Quigley? He's a friend of mine. I'm staying with him. I'd better take you there. At least you can have a bath, something to eat, and a change of clothes, all right? Brilliant. Thanks. What kind of people can they be? I've heard about children being locked out and what it leads to. What's a boy's father do? There is no father. Keep your voice down. And the mother's a prostitute, I suppose. As a matter of fact, she is. Then she should be prosecuted. What kind of bitch can she be leaving a child locked out and crying in the rain? <laughs> what the hell are you laughing at? You, you pompous ass. But no, that's not quite fair. You weren't to know. That child's mother is an angel, a goddess. What do you mean? Not now. Till you later. I'm hungry. No, mother, I do not intend to humiliate myself any further. She can bloody well stay in center, bloody Barbara. Wavering, Mungo, she's teetering on the brink, I know it. Well, let her bloody teeter then, I don't care. Don't think I don't know where you're going, Mungo. <laughs> Goodbye, mother. Sin. I don't care if Alison never comes back, Mother. I don't care who looks after the boys. I don't even care what happens to you, Mother. I just want Hebe. He 
baby. I just want to bury my face in her. I can live happily ever after. Why, yes. Why, I just happen to be in the area, you know, just passing through. I just uh, thought I'd call in and see how you were. A very kind soul. I'm very well, Mungo. You go through. What the hell are you doing here? Mrs. Fox is my aunt, Mungo. Oh, oh yes, yes, so she, so she is. And you have met Hebe, my occasional cook. Oh. Uh, Ah, yes, yes. Um, yes. At my mother's. Yes. yes, of course. I hope she's well. Uh, yes, yes, she's uh, fit as a bloody fiddle, thank you. Actually, Rory was just leaving, weren't you, Rory? Was I? Oh, good. I mean... Uh... Have you somewhere to stay, Mungo? No, no, I hadn't. Well, I... He could stay with Rory. You see, he is in the guest room here. You won't mind putting Mungo up for one night, will you, Rory? No. No, not at all. Delighted. You still can't tell us what happened? Was it that bad? I've done some terrible things in my life, Silas. But look at me now. I'm as happy as a sand boy. Were you planning suicide when Jim found you? Bernard, for God's sake. And we all plan suicide now and then. Dogs accepted. No problem with dogs. Uh, you know, it must be uh, 30 years now since, uh, since I planned it. What about you, Jimmy? Entertain us with some of your early misfortunes. All right. Quite some time ago, I imagined myself in love. It was in Italy. It was a feast day. You know the sort of thing. Statues of saints carried wobbling down the streets. Great crowds of people singing and chanting. The smell of garlic, wine, incense. It was at night. The procession, the whole town was lit by candles and torches. I was watching from a balcony. I saw her in the street with a bunch of hippies. I'd never seen her before. There were stalls selling necklaces made of hazelnuts. I ran down into the street and bought her one. Just went up to her and put it round her neck. What did she look like? Very long hair, long dress, blue eyes. She was very young. She was lovely. Then she sort of went crazy. I just couldn't keep up with her. I thought afterwards she must have been on something. We'd been in my room, but she wanted to go out into the street again. We ran into a sort of street brawl. It was nothing to do with us. And I lost her. Just lost her? She just seemed to vanish. I looked for her all night. All the next day. No one seemed to know her. When I couldn't find her, I felt like killing myself. But you didn't. No. Do 
you still look for her? Yes, I suppose I do. Sometimes I see a woman who reminds me of the girl. Never is her, of course. Yeah, but that must be tantalizing. Keeps me young. And single. Yes, that too, I suppose. Not bad, your cheese. You're disgusting. And you're a snake in the grass. I was going to marry her. Well, I am going to marry her. Hmm. This comes from Fordham's. Yes, I'm going to marry her. You are married to Alison, and you have two horrible boys. Never have children. Millstones. Total millstones. You're a strange looking fellow. What the hell does she see in you? You look like the white rabbit. I happen to be very good in bed. And I'm passionately in love with her. And you don't look funny in that hat. You just look stupid. So am I. She's so, she's so soft and warm. Eh? Nothing flabby about her, is there? <laughs> she's so tender. Oh, I could eat her. Well, don't talk about her as if she were a steak. I shall if I want to. She's my mistress. She's not your mistress, not my mistress. We're just members of a syndicate. That's right. We're at her mercy. A bitch. Not a bitch. She's an angel. I love her, Mungo. I love her so much. I love her so much, too. I saw her first, anyway. Well, that's irrelevant. Look, what do you propose we do about this? Will you give her up? Absolutely not. Will you? Never. We'll have to share her then. 50-50, right? None of this syndicate nonsense. Keep her in the family. Just between the two of us. And when the boys grow up, they can join the club. Put their names down for it. Like Eaton. Hm. Be brilliant. That's really horrible. Not a bit of it. Be like a family firm. Hmm? Like um, Rothschild's. Gross. Look at it this way. She's not going to marry either of us, is she? Hmm? I mean, this is all we can hope for, isn't it? Hmm? Am I right? Oh, Hebe. Let's go around there and put it to her. Hmm? It's hmm? a bit late. You think so? What's the time? Five past three. Ah. Oh. Perhaps we should go to bed first. Mm. I've only got one bed, Mungo. Oh, for God's sake, Rory! I'm, I'm your cousin! How sweet of you. You're up early. 
She's still in bed. I thought she deserved a lie-in. What with one thing and another. Oh, Bernard, is he all right? Are you sure? Yes, of course, I'll tell her. She'll want to come straight away. Yes, of course, of course, I can spare her. I'll wake her now. Bernard, darling, you will keep in touch. Goodbye, my love. <laughs> Ah. Oh, yeah. What's the time? Quarter to ten. Oh, shit. You are my honey, honey, suckle. I am the me. I like to sit down this week. I love you, love you. Long go. Hello, Mungo. What a surprise. Where's Hebe? Oh, she had to leave. But Alison's here. Alison? Hello, darling. I've come back to you. Oh. Good. Can I help at all? I suppose we could ask this young woman to telephone a garage for us. What's her name? Come here. Heel. It's the only chance we've ever had, and we missed it. You wouldn't even tell her the dog's name was Smut. Shut up, woman. I could see she didn't think much of this. For God's sake, woman, what do you think you're doing? We'll never get to that wedding. She's not going to ring any garage. Why should she? Your behaviour was inexcusable. Oh, shut up, woman. I never enjoyed sex with you, Christopher. Shut up. Only on one occasion did I enjoy sex. Shut up. And that was at the Hotel d'Angleterre in 1929 with a man named Bernard Quigley. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up! It is you. Sorry, what? I'm looking for my son, Silas. He's in the cottage. He's fine. Thanks. Um, listen. Not now, Jim. You need to be alone. I have to see her. It's important. Only to you. There's plenty of time, Jim. She's not going to run away this time. 
Come on. Take me for a drive. Take me to a movie. A movie? Why not, dear boy? I've spent many a happy afternoon at the movies. Come on. And I was sick on Mrs. Reeves' shoes. But it was worse in the evening. They kept on about living in the street. And Mr. Reeves kept giving me wine. And asking about my father. And making jokes about cooks. And I hated him. I told him you were a hermaphrodite. I threw my wine in his face. Good for you, darling. I looked up hermaphrodite in the dictionary. Now I feel even stupider than ever. Do I have a father? No. Well, yes. But I only saw him once. And then I lost him. Was he nice? Yes, I think so. He smelled of coffee. No, I'm dreaming. It's you that smells of coffee. Why? It's this jersey that smells. Listen. There's another thing I have to tell you before someone else does. As well as cooking jobs, I sleep with men for money. I don't mind. You're a much better mum than anyone else's. Michael's mother's horrible. Horrible looking too. He's got teeth like a horse. And it's only to pay for school fees. Well, if that's all, you could give it up if you liked. I wouldn't mind. I could go to Charles's school. Oh, darling, it's not a very good school. It's all right, I think. Not bad. Better than mine, anyway. Actually, all schools are horrible. But at least they let you go home at night at Charles's. Who wants to be a posh snob anyway? Not very nice posh snobs. No, they're not. Silas, I'd love you. What a sweet little car. Oh, my dear God. How long do you need? I don't know. Ten minutes? A lifetime? I'll give you an hour. Good luck. Hello. your smell. It's this jersey you lent him. I smell of coffee. I keep a coffee shop. Coffee one side, antiques the other. Why? I get panics. Nightmares. Burning torches. Running through dark streets. And then a nice smell. I worked in a coffee bar then, too. Do you remember me? There was a fiesta. Strings of hazelnuts. Candles on window ledges. You ran away. I lost you. We made love. It's been a marvelous, haunting memory for me. I'm sorry if it's a nightmare for you. I've been looking for you for 12 years. I don't remember. I'm sorry. He's my son. Just look at him. He's got your eyes. He's a lovely boy. Look, um, perhaps we could get to know each other. I don't want to bother you. I'm not sure I want all this. 
I mean, I've got my life pretty well sorted. Well, so have I. And you're not the girl I dreamed about. Well, you are, but you're not. She was so vulnerable. You're stronger, tougher. <laughs> I'm older, Jim. Yes. We don't know each other. Hebe. Jim. Hello, Silas. You know that girl you met in Italy? Is that my mother? Yes. I thought it must be. Mum, I left my bag at the Reeves. It's all right, darling. We'll go and get it. Well, they'll be angry with me. They better not be. Don't worry, Silas. Can we go home now? Careful there. I've got the cat in there. No trip. <laughs> Mum, mm -hmm. what are you going to do about Jim? I don't know. Mum, mm -hmm. do we have to meet my bag at the airport? Absolutely we do. Don't worry. We'll outface them. Virtue will triumph. Come on, go. Oh, do belt up, Rory, for Christ's sake. Nothing that's supposed to park. Oh. 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 Don't mind the old chap in a bit of a hurry. So was I. Spent a little bit more time than the after lunch. Just about that. Yes, they are. Get it, sir. Oh, it's a Oh, my God! Oh, how are you? I'm well, I'm well. How are you? How are you? Very good time. Oh, well, how was it? Hmm? We had a brilliant time, Pa. We sailed every single day. Oh. And shags galore. Shags on the rocks, shags in the water, shag after shag. I think you're having one neutered. Monkey. Good idea. Darling, that tiresome woman's supposed to be here to collect her wretched boy's bags. Hello, everyone. Oh, I say. Oh, thank you very much. Hello. It's been quite, uh, quite super having Silas. Hello. I'm Alison Duff. I believe you cook for my mother-in-law. That's right. Oh, and are these your sons? The little millstones? <laughs> Strange we've never met at school sports or speech day. I fear you never shall now. It's a very good comprehensive here, full of such nice people. Oh, here, Oh, hello, Rory. I, I, um, you. Darling. Oh, there you are, darling. Sorry, had trouble parking the car. Some oof. I don't believe you've met Silas's father, have you? Those, um, chaps at the airport, I was wondering if they might have been. Yes. They were my syndicate. Your peacocks. What? You must know the story of your namesake, Hebe the goddess. She harnessed peacocks. Oh, yes. Yes, 
Yes, she did. Well, I'm letting mine go now. Good. It's just an idea in your head, Jim. I'm not that girl you remember. I know. I love you. <laughs> Do you believe me? It's ridiculous, but... Yes, I think I do. Suppose I volunteer to be honest. I mean, forever and ever. You're only one. What would you say to that? I wish I could think of something witty and original to say. Something we'd remember in years to come. Just say anything. You're on.